Hi, um, I'm Beverly Wood and I am your moderator for this panel on engaging students in statistics through the arts. I'm pleased to introduce to you our panelist, uh, Larry Lesser is an award-winning statistics education professor at the University of Texas at El Paso. He is interviewed in the current issue of the Journal of Statistics Education, which I'm sure you will enjoy. Lucy Irving is a lecturer in psychology at Middlesex University in London. Lucy teaches statistics and research methods to undergraduate and master's level students and is the founder of Dancing Statistics. Meryl Goldberg is a professor of music at the California State University uh, San Marcos and director of Art Equals Opportunity a research-based initiative focused on the importance of arts as essential in education. She specializes in arts integration and has numerous publications and grants on the subject. Visit csusm.edu slash art op for more information. And we are uh, happy to have you with us today. Take it away. Thank you, Beverly. Good afternoon. Um, can y'all hear me? Yes, you're good. Right. Okay. So good afternoon. We're going to start us from West Texas. It is great to be part of this uh, panel with Meryl and Lucy. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of stuff. Uh, each of us is going to talk about seven minutes and then we'll have time for uh, overall discussion. And, uh, and we range from, uh, from song to dance, but this panel is not just a song and dance. There is much research and benefits behind the arts and STEM. And so let's go full steam ahead. All right. So I don't want to dwell on this slide, uh, but suffice it to say that I've, I've written a lot of songs and poems um, in STEM as well as outside of STEM. Um, and, and while songs are not the same thing as poems, um, one bit of overlap is that one of these statistics poems um, in the current Journal of Humanistic Mathematics that I published used a statistical sampling scheme to turn a song lyric into a poem. And if you're curious, you can look that up or ask me uh, later. Um, and so um, it's it. So go back to the, uh, here we go. All right, so also I have to notice, uh, uh, note that this month CAUSE launched its its um, eighth biennial A Mu Zing, A Musing uh, contest of different forms of fun or art, including jokes, cartoons, poetry, songs, and videos. The deadline is April 1st, it's free to enter, there's cash prizes. At the bottom you can see there is the, um, uh, the uh, the URL for that. And um, another place to find the URL for that is on our CauseWeb Fun Collection page. You can see, where's my spotlight? Here's my spotlight. Uh, here's where you can get the contest rules. Um, other things you'll notice here is if you click here on the CauseWeb Fun page, um, you can get a bibliography of, of different uh, fun modalities and art modalities, as well as sample lesson guidance. Um, you can see here that you can search by topic, or you can also search by keyword. You can see our collection has well over 800 items. And actually, once uh, we uh, clear the backlog we have, it'll be uh, over 900 items. And so you can see there's a lot of uh, ways to, to do that. Uh, let's see. So to go, here we go. Next one. We can also search by uh, type of fun. And you can see right now we've got 12 modalities of fun. Most of these I would also consider in the arts. Not all of them. I mean, a puzzle or a quote aren't really art per se, but most of the others are. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we're looking to add a 13th mode of art, namely dance, thanks to our uh, panelist, Lucy Irving, that you will hear from shortly. So, so that's very exciting. OK. Um, so our fo my focus uh, on my part of the panel is the songs, and we have um, 178 and counting of, out of a collection. So what is that? That's probably more than 20%. So it's a decent uh, uh, segment of, a, of the collection. Um, we have some that are parodies, some that are originals, and almost all of them have sound files. And so all you have to do is hit play. So we're trying to make this uh, user-friendly. Uh, where you don't have to necessarily be an artist or performing artist yourself to use these in the classroom. In fact, we've done uh, studies where we uh, inserted them into a learning management system. So it was, uh, it's something that can work even offline now that everything is, uh, you know, online. Um, and so that's another nice uh, feature as well. 
So uh, we'll say more about that later. Um, so here are some key uh, references. Um, the first three are based off the CauseWeb website. Here's the URL for the fund collection that I showed you already. Um, this is a website of Project Smiles, which is an NSF grant that I have with Dennis Pearl and John Weber. Um, and it involves songs that are interactive, interactive in that students are prompted for inputs that then show up in the song, kind of like the word template game Mad Libs, if you remember that. Um, and so I encourage you to check that out. That's a whole other kind of way of using songs. And that same grant also spun off the Voices Initiative, and here's the URL for that, where we uh, address song, not just in statistics, but across all STEM fields. And we've had three annual conferences so far. In fact, uh, Meryl um, Goldberg, our next presenter in this panel, uh, was one of the presenters at the very first one. We have uh, over 100 archived uh, presentations spanning these three conferences. That's a free resource to everybody. And then finally, uh, I've compiled a web page um, of sort of my ongoing uh, solo and joint work involving uh, educational fun. Um, but here's a couple of things you could start with. And so that's um, another thing. But that's, that's, that list has gotten surprisingly long. And so I realized people would like to have sort of a shorter list uh, to start from. And so here's sort of like a top half dozen uh, references specific to st song in statistics. And so, for example, this top entry uh, is, was based on that interactive song grant that I mentioned. Uh, this, this next example here was the previous NSF grant um, where we did an experiment to show that inserting songs into learning management systems, uh, the students that had, were randomly chosen to have those inserts um, perform better, um, like two thirds of a letter grade better on embedded exam questions. So we have, uh, and everything else is literally the same because it was a virtual experiment, so to speak. Here's some other articles involving other aspects of songs as well. Um, also, there's a, a poster we did earlier today that um, you can find that um, is a further bit of uh, literature on this. So there's a lot of possible benefits and goals. I'm not going to read all of these, but because this is being recorded, you can browse this more um, in more detail later. Um, but again, it's not, you know, I mean, obviously bringing song into the classroom is fun. It's certainly the, the most memorable thing I do per minute. You know, it's only 1% one, 1 of class time but it's what gets noted perhaps as much as anything in the end of course evaluation. So it definitely makes a uh, impression on students. And here, here are some goals, uh, benefits that, that uh, people have found uh, on this. And we could add a few more things to that list. We've heard about active learning earlier today. There's a meta-analysis about that and, and, and song is a way to, that can be used for active learning. It can build classroom community. It models the creative process. And it disrupts uh, stereotypes people might have about, you know, stats class, stats uh, teachers, or stats as a field. You know, the the, the scary uh, nerdy guy that's in the draw mathematician or scientist studies. And so you, you it really disrupts it in a very quick way when you just you know bring in a song for a concept or maybe even humanize the field by, for example, one of my songs is uh, is called Florence about Florence Nightingale. So reminding students that, you know, here, here's a great female statistician in history that they might not have realized was a statistician who made a real human difference. And by the way, her birthday, her, her bicentennial, bicentennial, bicentenary birthday was just a week ago. Okay, um, so a few quick takeaways. Um, uses or involve a lot of things like, you know, recall is, is, is uh, perhaps the most obvious way people use songs. You know, a quick jingle like my 10 second p-value jingle. It is key to know what p-value means. It's the chance with the null you obtain data that's at least that extreme. You can do that twice for the CDC hand washing rule. But there's a lot of other ways songs are used too with concepts and processes and connections. Like I have a song about the lottery. Um, again, it's, uh, there's tips of how to make songs the most memorable if you're writing them. The role of the student can be varied. You can, you can analyze existing songs. Um, you can uh, uh, have students listen or help perform the songs, write a report about them, make a video, or write new ones. And there are some tips for that. You don't have to just try this from scratch. Um, there's some presentations here that I've highlighted that um, give you some uh, guidance for that. So I think that is the end of my time. And so we'll turn it over to the next panelist. All right. Hey, thanks, Larry. And it's always a pleasure. Uh, so 
I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. And, um, and what I'd like to do is take um, a little bit to highlight why the arts are really important and why arts integration makes such a difference. Focusing on these areas, care and connect, um, create, engage, and document. We'll go to the second slide. So uh, here are six amazing future teachers and their names are uh, Leah, Ashley, Tara, Amy, Ariel, and Gia, all of whom are working in schools for college credit as arts ambassadors in doing STEAM activities before COVID. When we went into our stay at home order, these students were beside themselves. My first check with them was via Zoom like we're doing. And I asked them each for one word describing how they were feeling. These words were confused, anxious, disbelief, weird, stuck and different. I recognized right away that caring and connecting was paramount to whatever or however we decided to move forward. So what next? I had them create, create more. And as they began to develop their ideas and try them out, such as the chalk art and rock art pictured here, I saw that their, their art unfold. I recognized how the art of creating and arting transformed their spirit and motivated them. The intentionality of arting is mindful and it brought them each to experience magical moments, especially as they engaged others and left rocks, in this case, only to find that they had been gone the next day, presumably taken home by neighbors. Through such acts, they acted and they shared their own humanity, felt a sense of accomplishment against the backdrop of the traumatic disruption of their lives. So this engagement, and I'll talk more about how it relates to uh, science and stats and all that, um, but this engagement brings agency, power, joy, and recognition. Um, engagement through what I call arting brings us not only joy, like Larry was talking about with his songs, um, but some comfort and recognition. And it brings agency and power. It has a sense of power when you're creating stuff. Um, just FYI, the beautiful cat um, is inspired by John Krasinski's imaginative SGN, Some Good News Broadcast, The Prom Edition. The middle picture is of students singing their subject matter. And on the right is a card made my, by my own kid who's 21 years old um, and she's autistic. And I will say that creating art has been her solace during this time. Um, she even donates uh, some of the profits she makes. She sells these cards for a buck to a homeless, uh, homeless group we work with. So now, um, one of the things that I do with my students that I think is a huge, I hope will be a big takeaway for all of you, and I'm going to ask you to go to the chat box for this, is um, in a class, what I have my students do is um, take a, a shell or a, well, it could be anything, a shell, in this case, a flower. So I'm, I'm not giving you a real flower, but here's a flower. And I ask them two things. I ask them to, well, I ask them to draw from the inside out. So actually start in the middle of what their flower looks like or their shell, or even we did it with a tarantula once, believe it or not. And then take, keep two lists, one of things you notice and one of things you wonder. So right now, if you would, in your um, chat box, um, start writing some of the things that you notice about the flower and some of the things that you wonder. Um, symmetry, gradient, order, point in the middle, where does it end, how many seeds, mix of color, notice the spiral shape and color change, segments too large, the seeds in the middle appear to move in both clockwise, complex. So as you can see, there is just a lot to notice and a lot to wonder. Um, and again, it gets the students really thinking. Um, just so that you know, I do this also with having students take pictures um, and, and the pictures on the right, what did they notice? What did they wonder when they were out taking pictures, like pictures? Um, we also do this with students in, um, in language arts. So 
uh, picto spell is on your left in that thing that is round, that is an R. It's actually the word round, um, a little bit of a fun thing. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide in um, just to keep going here. So one of the things about doing this art activities and getting people super engaged with their art activities is that it can, can create a sense of accomplishment and really um, change how they are. So now, if you remember a few slides ago, um, my students started the, the COVID part of the semester with the words like confused and disoriented and awful and blah, blah, blah. Well, we after doing an exercise like this notice wonder one, this is what my students wrote on uh, the whiteboard function of Zoom that they felt grateful, fun, happy, thank you, inspired, feeling good. Um, so, you know, you can see that these activities even really tap into the socio-emotional learning and really get the students in a place that they feel like they can learn. And especially at this time, they can learn again. Um, so I also wanted to emphasize that don't forget what research already shows us, the arts equal empathy, kindness, leadership, hope, resiliency. There is tons and tons of research. Larry showed you some. I'm sure Lucy will too. We have these Y art cards on our website, which I'll um, show you here. Uh, the website is www.csusm.edu slash art up with about 15 different cards on Y art. And uh, when you click on the cards, you can, uh, it will take you to citations that are updated twice a year. So with that, I thank you and I'm going to hand you over to Lucy. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, so these films were designed for psychology students initially. Um, uh, and if you haven't seen any of them, then you could watch one while I'm speaking. There's no voiceover, just music. Um, so you'll find the films on the uh, BPS official YouTube channel. Um, and the aim is to demonstrate these four statistical concepts using dance and movement. So there's sampling and standard error correlation, variance and frequency distribution. Um, dance has existed as a form of human expression for millennia. Um, and it's found across all human cultures, like music and the visual arts. It can be traced back to rituals and social expression, and it defies barriers of race, status, generation, social class, and geography. Um, the films were aimed at those who may lack confidence in the area of statistics or who may simply enjoy thinking about things in new ways. Um, many undergraduate psychology students say that the statistical uh, component is the most daunting and challenging aspect of their degree and the most anxiety inducing. Um, and I want to challenge that because I'm sure many of you guys do as well. So I'm going to tell you a bit about some of the work I've done on the response to the films as well as some related literature in the area. Um, the merging of science and the arts isn't entirely new. Um, enhancing understanding of subjects like maths through music and movement has been done with children for some time. Um, it is rarer in higher educational settings though, possibly because older individuals don't all find this type of thing too appealing. Um, once children hit teenage years, their appetite for dancing on command in front of their peers declines somewhat. Um, but the difference with my films is that the viewers aren't expected to do any dance, just to simply observe. So I wanted to gain some understanding of what people thought about the films. Um, so I conducted a qualitative piece of research. Now, I'm a quantitative researcher by trade, um, and thematic analyses are not my usual style. Um, however, it is a good way to analyse text, to extract common patterns. And so I did one on the YouTube comments, and I found five themes, and here they are. Um, these uh, YouTube comments, alongside the tweets that, I was, that I've seen and personal communications I've received, all demonstrate that it's not only students who are engaging with the films and they're not only being viewed in higher educational settings. Um, I know that the films have been enjoyed by sports scientists, vets, uh, students of education, uh, marketing students, journalists, dancers studying business, training nurses, um, and students of other STEM subjects as well. Um, demonstrating statistics um, in this way appeared to be enjoyable to many viewers, um, but of course the aim is to aid understanding. 
Um, at present, there's only anecdotal evidence that the films do this. Um, and my next aim is to look more closely at whether the films actually improve understanding of the key concepts that are outlined. Um, I published a paper on using dance to teach statistics and related subjects. Um, and this image just shows how widely the paper was accessed. Um, it's been proposed that a benefit of using graphics is that they communicate across cultures and the same has been said of dance. Um, so it can be seen that, that this distribution shows that people from many different cultures have at least read about the films and about teaching in this way. And I also presume they probably watched them too. Um, embodied learning um, is another potential area that's quite relevant to understanding the response to these films. Uh, many of the examples that are in the literature focus on the benefits of actually doing some dance. Uh, the idea with embodied learning is that we use our physical experiences when engaging in higher order thought processes. Um, and these can serve as a basis for new knowledge and people may recall more when they've engaged in some embodied learning. Um, we know that there are benefits to learning from physical enactment or embodied cognition, um, but this can also happen. But I wonder if this can also happen through watching others do something physical like dance. Um, well, um, observation can still produce a type of embodied learning, um, but it might not be as stable um, or as durable as higher embodied experiences, which combine core body engagement and strong neuromuscular activation. Um, one doesn't passively watch the films, though. Uh, rather, the audience is gently guided through and told what to consider as they watch. Um, one is still active and hopefully engaged with the movements, but it's not actually moving. Um, this brings an interactive feel to the pieces, um, and students often say that interaction is important for their engagement with the subject, as we've, as we've already discussed. Um, I did find one interesting piece of research which took place in a college about a project called Dance Chemistry. Uh, this initiative teaches chemistry topics using um, videos which feature dance, and students involved said that the videos help them to visualise chemistry ideas in new and memorable ways. Um, here are some quotes from the students. Um, the results also showed an increase in students' average scores after watching a five minute video featuring dance. Um, and all the students appreciate the visual way of learning as it grabbed their attention. Um, Tane Edwards also point out that art is often considered to be a universal language, um, but statistics is rarely thought of in this way. Um, so I think that, and I think the surprising aspect of mixing stats with dance certainly intrigues uh, some people. Um, here are some of my observations. It's unclear whether the films help to improve statistical knowledge, I haven't actually done that research just yet, um, or whether they simply spark interest and possibly further engagement in statistics. Um, perhaps that anxiety is reduced by watching the films. Um, some of the comments suggest this. Um, we all want to make statistics um, as accessible to as many as possible. Um, and the past few months especially have shown the importance of being able to uh, comprehend statistics um, and how valuable this skill actually is. Um, Arts-based teaching curricula are also known, as we've just seen, to develop in, uh, creative thinking, which is something which is highly valued by many industries. Um, and it's also been recognised that linear approaches to teaching and learning, which focus primarily on repetitive skills development, um, tend to produce poor educational outcomes. So this is another reason people might be enjoying these types of things. So here are a few conclusions. Um, students certainly seem to like the films and they've been used in various disciplines. The comments suggest that the film made un made understanding of the concepts, but this is yet to be shown statistically. Um, we know that embodied learning works for a number of reasons, but also that not everyone wants to be made to dance. Um, these films may provide a happy medium where one gets some of the benefits of embodied learning, but without the potential anxiety or, uh, dare I say, it, cringe factor that could get could result. Um, we've seen in this session that statistics can be beautiful and that there certainly appears to be an appetite for merging the arts and statistics. Um, so long may it continue. I've just put some references here for you. And as with the others have said, if you've got any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. 
Well, thank you, Larry, uh, Lucy, and Meryl. We appreciate your um, insights and in how to integrate arts into uh, teaching statistics. We do have some questions um, uh, in particular uh, about the availability of the videos and the songs. Um, if there's copyright issues, is there any way to get them into our courses? Could one or both of you talk, uh, uh, Larry and Lucy, about any concerns we have around those? Um, I'm happy to go first. Um, there are no copyright issues as far as I'm aware. The films are openly available on YouTube and um, other colleagues, um, Professor Andy Field, who I made the films with, has got them on his um, website, he's hosting them too. As Larry said, they'll be on on the uh, the fun modalities collection, um, and so that's the best way to get them. Really, or just search for them on YouTube. And I'll just add that the songs, as well as all the other eight hundred and forty one items on Causeweb, that is a publicly available website. No subscription or password needed to get into that, and so that's available for any instructor to use for non commercial educational use. Right. Thank you. And, and Lucy, a follow-up question would be about uh, some sort of lesson plans <coughs> that might go with that. Do you have anything or? These, these are in development. Um, I've been discussing this with Larry. It's something that I've been um, producing as you know for quite a long time but um now it seems a, a good opportunity to get my finger out and, and finish these so these will be um available alongside the films um in the not too distant future through the Causeweb fun yeah oh, okay we'll adding dance as a modality and so when we post uh, her videos we'll have the lesson plans accompanying them as well great great glad to hear that um Uh, we have a comment in our question box about um, asking students to view and comment on their usefulness be an yeah. appropriate way um, yes I, I completely agree uh, yeah. it's something that I'm definitely um, in the process of sort of setting up and if anyone's got ideas or wants to collaborate you know get in touch I'm, I'm all ears great by the way just to follow up on that um, the uh, Causeweb collection right now has the ability for people to log in and uh, basically post ratings and comments on any of the any items in the cause collection and you, in right. fact it points towards uh, getting rewards for that so it's a it's a win-win fantastic great um comparing to oh a, another a suggestion about getting the students to compare two songs uh what did they learn that was new or what gave better understanding um so that kind of brings me back to Meryl's uh, comment about what do you notice and what do you wonder? Uh, looking at some photography or, or drawings or paintings, we could we could do similar um, activities uh, with the song and dance and poems and music of other sorts and um, a, a great. Uh, another comment uh, question is uh, loving the concept of embodied learning. And could you mention a few resources to learn more about this approach? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I haven't got any open now, but what I'll do is make sure I add some at the end of my presentation before the uh, slides are shared and then they'll be at the end of that. Um, I've got definitely got a few things. You Great. Can Very good. There's at least one current NSF grant dealing with embodied learning. So it's a big topic right now. Fantastic. Very good. I think we've come to the end of our uh, scheduled time. Uh, we appreciate uh, the things that you've shared with us today, and I'm sure you'll be getting some emails here soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.